Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. Uh, today I'm sitting in front of my computer working on some drawings uh, for the uh, 3D model package that I'm developing for the wing. What we're looking at here right now is the main section of the wing. Uh, this airfoil here matches up with the center section of the wing which stays uh, with the pilot's cage. The pilot's cage and center section are kind of a unit that are transported together. I've already drawn that up and distributed it. Um, there are details to be applied to that center section yet, but this is the mating interface here. Uh, and then this wing panel runs all the way out to where the uh, swept back um, wingtip uh, what, what do you want to call it? Shell. It'll be a shell. It'll be a composite shell that goes on the end of the wing here. So this encompasses the center section of the wing and the wing tip. And what you can't see here on this drawing right now is there's a dividing line here that has the mount for the winglet and the winglet. And so this section gets uh, pinned on to the center section. And then this outer portion gets pinned on to the end of this section and sandwiches the winglet mount in between those two panels. Now I'm doing, uh, I'm taking the approach of top-down modeling uh, for this portion of the uh, design. Uh, this is a master uh, model that I will take slices out of and chunks out of to develop the main wing panel or the center section and the tip panel along with uh, the winglet mount. Uh, this is uh, got about eight degrees of twist in it yeah in fact it is eight degrees exactly it's uh, zero twist out to this point wash out no wash out uh, to that joint and then eight degrees of wash out at the tip out here and i did this as a master so that when i take the slices through here we're picking up the data for the washout that's in the wing and the tapering airfoil section. This uh, airfoil here at the root is 15% thick. The airfoil out at the tip here is 12% thick. So the loft between those two, along with the twist, gives the uh, uh, shape of the wing. And we will, I'll build uh, the other 3D models out of this master uh, model. Uh, that way, when we put all the pieces back together, we know they'll actually fit. We hope. Cross our fingers. So you can see this was done on uh, the uh, front plane here. I have it on. And I have inserted, uh, uh, this is, uh, I can't read it right now, but let's see if I can highlight it. If I can highlight that one. That says that's the front plane, front plane, and this is the top plane here. And then I added a plane out here for the uh, uh, airfoil that's out here at the tip. The interesting thing with SolidWorks, now SolidWorks comes from Dassault, which is a big aviation company, and but it's French, you know, so uh, they do things a little differently. So what I've had to do here is set up this uh, model so that the Z-axis points up vertically, just like we do here in America for all of our aircraft designs, which means that if you open this drawing and it comes in upside down and backwards, uh, they have the Z-axis pointing down, they do some other strange things. And I've had to move things around in terms of how the airfoil coordinates come out of X-foil uh, and get uh, transferred into this drawing. Uh, just an interesting thing to work with and one of those little idiosyncrasies of SolidWorks that always makes aircraft designers go, hey, wait a second, what's going on here? Uh, the coordinate system's all messed up. And uh, why the French do it that way, I don't know, but uh, and they're an aviation company. Who knows why they did it that way? Uh, maybe somebody out there knows the secret. Anyway, so I'm going to move over to the other part of this. Here you can see I've uh, cut out uh, the... Uh, main wing panel, which is the center section, and I've cut out the tip panel, and what we have left out of that master drawing is the chunk of the wing uh, that constitutes the winglet mount. And this has been very challenging for me to build this model. Uh, I am still learning the software, and it's been a bit of work. Uh, this is about the sixth or seventh time I've done this model and I think I finally have something that's going to actually work and you can see it's not done yet um, but the basics of it are there uh, I started out with the when I made the two cuts when I cut away the uh, wing panels what you're left with is the two inch wide 
chunk of wing that had the correct airfoil shape to it. Now the tricky part about this particular drawing to me is that that two inch long chunk of wing uh, is got taper to it, the airfoil is changing, and it's got washout. So to deal with this complex uh, shape at this point in the wing, um, I simply uh, drew a side view on one of the cut planes here, one of the planes that I used to cut the wing, um, and I extruded that uh, drawing uh, up to the other plane that's two inches away, and that gave me a boxy square shape. Now that this shape here was based on uh, the original winglet mounts, but I increased the height a little bit here uh, because we've seen some airflow going from the inboard to the outboard portion of the wing over the top of the winglet mount. So I made this a little bit taller to help stop that uh, flow from cutting across too soon. Keep it keep it on the side of the wing where it belongs um, and prevent that spanwise flow. So I've increased the height a little bit here now. So I drew this shape on the side and I didn't include the front portions here because they're going to have to be lofted surfaces because they're uh, curved in more than one direction, actually two, yeah, two directions, three actually. Um, so uh, I extruded this first and then I came in and I uh, laid out the cutout for the spar that goes through here and did a cut through the wing along the uh, axis of the spar here, which is shown by this dashed construction line. So this is a angled cut through the wing, which represents the uh, angle that the spar runs at as it goes through this portion of the wing. Now I haven't done uh, the leading edge yet. There's a tube that goes in here at the leading edge uh, where the inboard and outboard sections of the wing socket into. Uh, there's a tube on each one of those that slips into a tube that's in here that secures the winglet mount between the two wing sections and I haven't uh, made that cut yet and finally I came in with the root airfoil from the winglet itself and laid it on top of the drawing here and I clipped it off where it was tangent to the sides of the winglet mount so that eliminates the front portion of that airfoil and here we have the aft portion of it. Then I did a essentially a vertical cut down of that shape uh, through the extrusion that I had just made uh, going side to side. And that, that cut's actually done at an angle that you can see here. Uh, I used the uh, trailing edge of the winglet mount as the guideline for the angle of that cut going down. And then that gives the appropriate shape here at the trailing edge of the mount. We can see that it comes that we have a constant thickness here at the back edge and if that vertical cut was not at an angle it would actually get wider at the bottom uh, instead of being the same thickness you will note that i don't have any of the fillets done yet here on the edges uh, nominally you would uh, build this whole thing and uh, then come in and sand uh, the core material uh, before you put fiberglass on so you have the right shape. So I'm not too concerned about putting those fillets in. Uh, your average builder is going to know that you're going to do that and that would be in the instructions and the photos that I supply of the uh, winglet mounts that I've already made. I've actually made two sets of these winglet mounts. The first set was done out of light ply and despite its name they were really quite heavy. They were over Two pounds for the two of them which didn't seem like a lot but uh, as the glider got bigger and heavier uh, that became a factor where I knew I could reduce the weight somewhat uh, the ones that I'm currently flying are made out of uh, uh, blue Dow expanded polystyrene as core material and it has uh, 120 style fiberglass put over the outside one layer very light saved approximately a pound uh, which is very significant. That's 1% of the aircraft weight. And they have functioned quite well uh, for the test flying. Uh, they, they do fine in flight. They carry all the loads just fine. But they're not quite durable enough. Uh, the blue foam has relatively low 
uh, compression capability. Uh, and uh, I think the final version would be made out of a quarter inch thick uh, Divinacell uh, expanded PVC foam. Uh, much better compressive strength than that foam. Three pounds per cubic foot, so it's 50% heavier on the foam. Um, but you go with a thinner sheet, so uh, it ends up being about the same weight as the uh, Blue Dow Styrofoam. Uh, more expensive, mind you, uh, but you end up with about the same weight and uh, you'll end up with a component that has much better durability. And then there'll be bulkheads and so forth in here. Some of the bulkheads are plywood, some of the bulkheads are foam. And at the uh, within this area here where this nose piece is going to go on here, the nose shape, at the bottom of it is a quarter inch thick piece of aircraft plywood that transfers the loads uh, from the front portion to the aft portion back and forth here and same thing on the bottom uh, just transfers the loads around the big cut that's made through here for the spars so we keep the front and aft portions of the winglet mount joined together and that would all be built up out of components so there's two side sheets a top a bottom and uh, several pieces to build up the the nose portion here and then there's a piece of tubing that goes in here at the front so when i'm done with this 3d model as a solid as one solid uh, then I'm going to take this and start slicing and dicing and uh, make an individual drawing for each one of the components that goes into this and then put those components together into an assembly drawing uh, so that we have a true 3D model where people can see how all of the components go together, where everything fits and how it's uh, joined together and get patterns out of it and the patterns are critical patterns are data files patterns are critical if you're going to cut out that phone by hand or you can take a data file and use your cnc router and route out the foam and maybe the plywood bulkheads and some of the other pieces uh, so that you get an exact fit on all the parts so there'd be a variety of ways that a builder can create these parts to uh, build the component so uh there you have it uh, this is where I currently stand. I think it's going to take uh, another probably month for me to get this correct and complete. Uh, I have to work on it between all the other family activities and so forth that I have to take care of. So I uh, uh, say once again, thank you for all your support. Please hang in there with me as I continue uh, working these models and I'll get them done as soon as I can. Uh, this video was originally made for my patrons at Patreon, the folks that uh, help support this project. Uh, and they get these uh, files first, and it's included as a part of their uh, membership on my Patreon site. If you'd like to receive uh, your very own copies of these files, uh, and that's everything, bill of materials, of all the patterns, uh, the total assembly, uh, as I go along, I, I build various 3D models of the wing, and then I distribute them out to my Patreon members. Uh, and if you become a member today, uh, I got a great welcome package for you filled with lots of goodies, and you'll start receiving your uh, drawing packages.